Hi, uh, what an honor. I mean, uh, two years ago, you know, I was uh, in the rut of my life, uh, sitting down wondering whether I should continue working for someone else. Uh, I'm sorry, before I get to that, I'm a product designer. Uh, and for those who uh, don't know what product design is, we simply create uh, usable functionality. People come up with amazing technology, but you need someone who can uh, package it in a way that the customer can understand because quite often the customer is not as literate as you are in, uh, in your industry. So anyways, coming back to my uh, story, when I was stuck in this rut uh, and I thought, you know, if I should gamble and, and quit my job and start doing something on my own because I kept picking at things, uh, saying that, you know, I can do things better than uh, my employers were doing at that point of time. So I said, you know, let me... Uh, put my uh, thought to test and I quit my job. I had some savings. I went over to live with my parents and I started doing design on my own. And <laughs> so um, the thing was it, was, it was a terrible decision at that point of time because no one wants to hire a designer in India. And uh, I was, I kept writing job applications uh, to people and uh, you know asking them if i could uh, uh, come and join your company and work for you and when they'd respond back i'd say how about you just outsource it to me it's a lot cheaper in india um, you know <laughs> you pay three four thousand dollars a month we can do it do an entire project for that much so uh, uh, anyways eventually that led to uh, the, the reason i'm here is because uh, one of the projects that i had done with uh, uh, a, a, a Canadian uh, inventor, uh, Charles Bombardier, uh, went viral. It was focused. Uh, it was featured on uh, Forbes and uh, and CNN and a couple of other uh, uh, like Tech Insider and stuff like that. And then suddenly people wanted to speak to me. You know, ask me how I got around to doing this. So uh, I'd like to start my uh, presentation with. Uh, a quote, you know, and the whole day today I, I've been hearing uh, things like do not reinvent the wheel, but uh, you look at the way technology is changing and look at the access to technology. Um, why not reinvent the wheel? Because uh, you're going to end up with these uh, uh, these uh, problems which, which are very fundamental. You know, people are actually physically reinventing the wheel. People are changing the, sh the way the wheel is shaped because they found much more efficient ways of doing it. So my, uh, my biggest uh, 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 motto is to, uh, to question the basic fundamentals on what uh, makes something what it is. Uh, perspective. Uh, so perspective is a very important uh, uh, thinking tool. Uh, now if you uh, look at this device, this is a, uh, it's a thermal camera that can uh, get plugged into your phone. Uh, so, if you use a, a bigger one, which uh, people do to, to look into space, uh, what you would notice is this is an image of, of uh, the Carina Nebula. And this is, it's a beautiful image. This is what your, uh, your vis visible light can show you, you know, these random vivid colors. But it's not good for science. It's, it's not something that you can use to study what's behind these things, because this is just a gaseous uh, cloud and it doesn't show uh, anything beyond that. But when you use one of these, I mean a lot bigger one, what you see is this. This is an image of just the thermal map behind this. So this is the kind of technology that we are stepping into day by day. And uh, you know, we are we're completely uh, changing the way we think. Uh, but then there's a downside of this technology too. It's uh, the same technology that's used to uh, shoot people, you know. Uh, if you want to shoot someone through a wall, uh, the, the military uses thermal imaging to see what's uh, behind it. Yeah, to snipe people. So this is uh, pretty much a small explanation of what uh, uh, this can do is it can uh, see the heat of your hand instead of seeing the uh, objects that are there in front of it. Uh, imagination. Uh, I think imagination is a very important tool and uh, most of us uh, leave imagination uh, to our five to ten year old selves and uh, we, st we start approaching uh, life in a much more uh, uh, objective and logical uh, way and we stop uh, dreaming of things. 
Uh, this is a uh, uh, we had we had done this one uh, uh, small program where we went to a few uh, uh, schools which were run by NGOs and we asked them to uh, you know draw some some imaginative uh, aircrafts or uh, or cars or boats or how would you like to come to school? So one of the children had drawn something like this, and where the innovation part comes in after imagination is where you can actually try to solve that problem by developing it. So this is a sketch I had done based on uh, the idea that that child had. And if you look at it at this stage, it looks a lot more possible than that, you know, little sketch that that kid had done. Uh, then it comes into inspiration. You know, we've got to uh, do things that will make the next generation, uh, you know, want to pursue what you're doing. Uh, as, a, as a child, you know, you're always uh, going to think of uh, becoming an astronaut or a, uh, or a pilot or a race car driver because those uh, professions are very inspiring and uh, if we are to uh, you know make an impact with uh, uh, things like alternative fuel and, and smarter grids you have to inspire little kids and you know like look at a solar car the, the first one that we saw it was so ugly no one would want to you know look at it and say yeah I want to drive that when I'm older so these things need to be a lot sexier, which brings me to uh, this concept uh, that I had uh, worked on. Uh, this is one of many concepts that I had worked on, but surprisingly it went viral. And I kept thinking, you know, uh, why on earth would this have gone viral? There's so much, uh, there's so much more meaningful uh, ideas that I had thrown out there. Uh, and, uh, you know, they would actually help uh, people get somewhere. This is a very wasteful thing. It's called the uh, uh, antipod. So the whole idea is that it's supposed to uh, reach its diametrical opposite as soon as possible. It's uh, backed by some technology which, is, which says it can fly at uh, a peak of uh, about 24 mark. And uh, that is insanely quick. It can go around the world in 36 minutes. So uh, and it would burn a lot of fuel and we don't know how to make this. But the thing was it was sexy and people loved that idea of, you know, I can get into an aircraft that looks a certain way and then shoot across the world. Uh, this was, uh, my contribution to it wasn't the technology. The technology, of course, came from people who understood, uh, uh, you know, flying machines much better than I did. Uh, I'm a simple product designer. So I started to look at animals which fly very well. Uh, one of them was the falcon. And the falcon, if you uh, notice, it's the shape of its wing and its uh, uh, its beak, uh, it's uh, got this distinct beauty about itself. Uh, and it just reassures you that this thing might fly. And uh, after this thing got published, I got, uh, uh, you know, there were, there were tons of people writing to me telling me this thing can't fly. Because there were <laughs> actual uh, engineers who sit down and work with fluid dynamics and they tell me that this is, this is not going to work out very well for you. But the reason I know that today is because of the fact that it, it was looked at by so many people. Um, so this is the technology. In short, what it does is it drops a counter flow uh, from the nose and the wing tips, and that allows the, the wind to be channelized. So you don't have the, the friction of the air at 24 mark. It's, it's going to be like you know, trying to cut through a, a, a tree almost, the density of the air. Uh, so the, the conventional method that uh, NASA used to use with their space shuttles was to have this uh, big dome-like front. and I mean, it doesn't make sense to have a dome-like front for uh, something that can fly really fast, does it? But uh, the reason it was that way was because uh, uh, the uh, speed at which it would, the, those shuttles would re-enter Earth, they'd punch the atmosphere and create a, a splash of air around it so that it wouldn't go and damage all the other parts. So anyways, cutting it uh, short, that's the technology behind that. Uh, there was another uh, issue that we had worked on, uh, which was uh, uh, the, the, there's, a, uh, there's a concept of cavitation. I don't know if, if there are any boat enthusiasts over here. So uh, uh, usually boats have outboard motors which have uh, a big V8 and V6 engines which are very polluting, very noisy. And uh, this is something that's actually uh, being worked on right now. There is a proof of concept of it. It works. It's a uh, dolphin's. Uh, tail that's uh, on a uh, it, it's connected to an electric motor and that would be connected to a, a power supply and it actually mimics the way a dolphin flaps its tails and moves forward 
Uh, this was another uh, solution I'd done for uh, India. Unfortunately, not a lot of people in India uh, read this because the, it, it became a bit of a, a talking point in Canada. Um, if, and especially for people who've come from abroad, you might notice that uh, our cops are very sexy. You know, when I was, I was living in uh, Singapore when I was studying, uh, the police over there, was, were, they were really fit. They had uh, really nice cars. They had, uh, you know, a gun holstered to them. And uh, they had these very impressive posters which, you know, made me want to quit my uh, studies and go and join the police over there. So uh, we had thought of uh, developing something that would be a sexy alternative so that cops could go around looking good. And uh, that would be an aspiration, you know. Uh, this was a very weird uh, concept. Um, and somehow got very popular because uh, th it, this is a hearse that, could, that would be electrically powered and your coffin goes into the middle of it and it will drive you autonomously into the grave. Uh, this is, uh, 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 th th it's called the seek lock. It was another concept which was developed to uh, deploy uh, search and rescue missions where you can't send human beings into uh, really hot temperatures. Sometimes burning buildings can reach up to 800 degrees Celsius. And uh, there would be these little drones that you can see the land drones and they'd have little air drones over there which would go out and scan areas and then come back and report if there are any signs of life and there'd be basic first aid on these land drones which would help out the victims. Uh, this one was just out of, uh, out of the love of it. It's a, it's a belly tank racer. These uh, uh, old war planes when they were being uh, uh, grounded they, you, they started chopping up the, the metal parts, putting engines in them and driving them on salt flats. The reason I did this was simply because, you know, people like to drive. And now you have this whole um, uh, culture of driverless cars with Tesla and, and what Mercedes-Benz is doing and how, how successful Uber has been. So to conclude, uh, we are cooking up a storm. We are planning to... Uh, get out there, get people to start innovating and the only way we can do that is not by, uh, you know, uh, speaking to people of my generation or generations which are older but we have to go to the kids. So we are actually uh, planning on going out to children and, and asking them to express their ideas and see if there's any patentability in, in some of them. You'd never know. So uh, to sum it up, I'd like to <laughs> quote uh, uh, our Prime Minister who says he can't uh, connect with the youth. Uh, this is something he had said in US. Uh, God bless you and may the force be with you. Thank you.